Welcome back to Maximum News. I am your host, as always, Max Danger Derrett. And I am Cybsidian, who totally forgot my cue. <laughs> it's okay. It's been it's been a weird week for all of us. It, it's been it's it is ridiculously hot here, and we are going into the high thirty five degrees or high thirties, depending on how you say that. Mm-hmm. And for some of you, you're like, "Wow, that's really cold," <laughs> but that's also Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So right. yeah, that'd be like what eight, like eighty, like high... ninety something around there. As soon as you start getting close to them, triple digits in Fahrenheit, it doesn't matter what whether you're listening to what it's it's just hot. So, yeah, I, I'm at uh, 22 degrees Celsius, which is about like 72, just 72, 73 Fahrenheit. So not to rub it in or anything, but let's talk about yeah. uh, games because you, you don't come to us to talk about the weather. I mean, if you do, you might want to video games. Somebody. I have a joke for you or perhaps a riddle. <laughs> Is the joke Konami? What is... No, no. Well, I mean, the joke is Konami. It's, the joke is always Konami. <laughs> right. But what does Kojima have to do with Abandoned, the video game, coming out for the PS5? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with any... It, it, nothing. Exactly right. right. Nothing. Okay. Well, let's just... I'll, I'll give, like, the devil its due in a second but just for anybody that might not know what we're talking about i'll just explain up front first what the whole deal is with abandoned so back in april there was this game announced uh there was like a trailer released on the official playstation youtube channel for a game called abandoned the entire trailer just featured like this voiceover from a woman and you're just wandering through it what looks like a procedurally generated forest from the unreal engine 4 and people speculated at the time hmm Reminds me of Silent Hill. Maybe it had something to do with Silent Hill. But then those rumors quickly died off. Uh, But recently, uh, as in the last week or so, I can't remember exactly what sparked this to happen, but there are these rumors that Abandoned might have something to do with Silent Hill started popping back up. And I'll explain to you why there was a conspiracy around this. And I will admit, and this is where I'm going to give the devil its due, I can understand why people would think, based on the little bit of information that we had, that there might be something here. I'll give you that information first but then i will give you the information afterwards that definitive well not definitively but mostly disproves abandon being whatsoever tied to silent hill so first of all here are the pieces of information that made us think hmm, maybe there's something here the game abandoned is being developed by a man named hassan karaman people thought that maybe this was an alias because the initials for hassan karaman are hk who else has those initials and has been tied to Silent Hill in the past. Well, that would be Hideo Kojima. You know, he was going to do the Silent Hills, plural, game back in uh, when it was announced in 2014 with the PT trailer. But then Konami decided to be a bunch of... Well, I I can't swear on this show. Sorry. Yeah, just... Insert terrible thing Very here. bad people. Yes, very bad people. And uh, we never got that game. And also, aside from the initials, apparently, when you translate Karaman from Turkish to Japanese, it translates into Kojima or Hideo. I can't remember which one. It's either one of the two. But I actually trans- uh, tried this using Google Translate, and it's legit. So those two pieces of information. Plus, this isn't the first time that Kojima has used a fake studio to promote one of his games. The studio that's supposedly working on Abandoned is called Blue Box Studios. And up until about a week ago, a lot of people just assumed that this was a fake studio. And the evidence they were citing is that, well, this, the logo for Blue uh, Box Studios is very similar to the PlayStation Studios uh, banner. And maybe that might be a little uh, bit of a uh, misdirect there. Um, also, apparently the real name for the game Abandoned isn't going to be Abandoned. On Twitter, uh, a little while ago, whoever operated the Twitter account said that the real name for the game actually begins with the letter S and ends with the letter L. Naturally, what a lot of people thought this pointed to is Silent Hill. So there's all that. And also apparently Blue Box Games is located in the Netherlands and Kojima has ties to the Netherlands because the engine that he used for Death Stranding is the Decima engine, which is used by Guerrilla Games who are located in the Netherlands. But that's about it. And, you know, there'll be people that point to one or two other things and say, hmm, maybe this, uh, maybe this suggests that it has something to do with Silent Hill. But I, I've looked at the rest of the evidence and for the most part, it's pretty much just people looking too hard into things. But the evidence that I just cited for you is the most most believable. Now, with all that said, 
it's pretty much confirmed. Like, I'd be willing to bet money that it has nothing to do with Silent Hill. And believe me, it breaks my heart to say that, but let's just run down everything that sort of points it in the other direction. On Twitter, the people at Blue Box Games released this statement. They said, We wanted to set things straight, and I'm quoting here, We have no relations with Konami. Silent Hill is owned by Konami. We do not have any relations with Hideo Kojima. It was never our intention to tease the name as Silent Hill. We sincerely apologize for this. And in echoing these sentiments, a couple of games journalists, prominent games journalists, have come out and said, yeah, no, it's pretty much guaranteed that this has nothing to do with Silent Hill. One of them is, uh, you know, Sibes BFF, Jason Schreier. He said it's pretty much not Silent Hill on Twitter. And uh, Jeff Grubb. No, who no, really? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> really and a deep investigative journalist like jason mcshryer can't figure out how to do a basic google search and doesn't have people connected to this small indie studio mm. oh lord no <laughs> could it be really absolutely right. not okay in case you guys don't know we don't really like jason schreier here um no, but... no i i especially don't like him and i gotta say that i mean again this is one of these things that so he's very confused about it like reading his twitter he's very confused as to who the this uh this um hassan i can i can't pronounce his Karaman. Last, Karaman. There you go. There we go. He doesn't know who's his backers, all this kind of stuff. And I mean, it's not that hard to figure out. Like, it took me about 30 seconds. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. But, yeah, no, no. We, we've we got, uh, it's an indie game by yeah. a small indie studio that is backed by people who have interest in such things. And, yeah, that's that's the great mystery. The the It really is a scenario of, like, just too much, like, random speculation coming in at on like weird timing and, and a bunch of other like random coincidence coincidences. Now, most of the time there is no such thing as coincidences. If if a certain billionaire is goes missing all of a sudden on the on the on the life planes, um, you know, inside a prison. I mean, that's not really I mean, there's very few coincidences that are there for that one. Mm. But sometimes things do happen. So in, in this case, it's one of it's the latter, not the former. Yeah. And just one other thing to add on top of all this, aside from Jason Schreier, one person that actually does have a pretty decent track record in games journalism is a guy named Jeff Grubb. We've covered his scoops in the past, and he's been generally right about them. He's the one that said that Starfield was going to be an Xbox PC exclusive. And I mean, like, yeah, you could probably guess that. But anyways, he also did say that... <laughs> that was very easily guessable, by the way. Right, but he also did say that we were going to get a Guardians of the Galaxy game before it was announced at E3. And he was right about that. Back in April, he wrote about Abandoned, and he himself said that it's not going to be a Hideo Kojima game. And look, it, even you can surmise that this isn't a Silent Hill or a Hideo Kojima game based purely on reason. You don't need any of this backing information that I just listed for you. You can just surmise that it's not a Hideo Kojima game because of what happened between Konami and Kojima six years ago. That relationship is toast. It is torched or torched earth scorched earth there's no chance in hell that konami would ever 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 let kojima anywhere near the silent hill property or the melgasol property not only yep. that yep. there's no chance they would ever license silent hill out to a studio that's an indie studio it would have to be at least a mid-tier to high tier studio that'd be willing to work on that game and believe is me there, guys yeah go ahead there's a lot of bad blood there i mean mm -hmm. it it would go against basically everything so yeah it would be a literal miracle if kojima was able to work on silent hill again if he were to be announced to be working on silent hill that would easily increase my lifespan by about 10 years because of just how much my body would feel revivified it'd feel like i was born again trust me guys there's nobody that wants a silent hill game more than i do especially one made by kojima but the only way you're ever going to get it is if you do one of two things or both things one stop playing games that are filled to the brim with microtransactions and stop paying for them. Because when you do that, it incentivizes the games industry to start putting their money towards single player games. It's the exact same reason why we don't have a Splinter Cell game after all these years. Second, anytime anybody interacts with anything that has to do with Konami, be it Pro Evolution Soccer, be it a pachinko machine, you walk up to them and say, hey, F Konami, don't give your money to them. And those are the only two ways. 
Aside from that, it's pretty much guaranteed we will never, ever, ever get another Silent Hill game unless they somehow license out the uh, development of the games to another studio. But I don't see what the incentive is for them to do that. They already make enough money as it is. Yeah, they they also, like I said, they have really bad blood there. And these people hold on to people as in like the people who run Kojima. Sorry. Konami. Uh, Konami. Um, the people who are in the 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 head spots over there at that board, they are so angry with Kojima. They hate him so much that they would rather put these things in a vault and never let them see the light of day, even if it means saving their company. Yep. They will die before they let this go, get into the hands of the people who they believe disrespected them essentially yep so, konami would need to run out of money before yeah. they started selling the stuff before, off yeah before they give it to eat and not and it's not just him it's any other studio even in japan they just really are not interested in anybody else running with this because they believe that they have ultimate control over this ip and again it's like over my dead body and unfortunately they have the money to make that work so that that ip is not getting out unless every single head on that board is retired and the company is basically split up and the assets are sold off and then the assets are bought by another company that then need to be bought and sold and bought and sold again and again and again it's like one of the one of the great ips i remember growing up with today finally came i heard news of it today that that the ip has finally come full circle back into the hands of the original creator oh, after sad. after several years um i don't want to name it here on the thing oh, okay. uh, but it's it's like it's like after it was almost it was over a decade where this ip was thought to be completely lost mm -hmm. completely changed from its original ip its original story is now finally in the hands and we'll see what happens with that so yeah but things are things are very rarely that have that kind of happy ending most of the time once an ip is gone i mean look at everquest everquest's <laughs> future content is sitting and i'm not joking it is sitting in a vault owned by a a russian hard asset company that mm -hmm. that's portfolio is full of gold oil copper nickel i think it's like that that's what they do they're a mining company and somehow they own EverQuest, the IP, and everything associated with what was going to be its future release. All the tech, all this amazing technology, story bricks, this amazing IP, or um, not IP, this amazing technology that's that builds living worlds and allows you to have like the butterfly effect. Just really makes NPCs come alive and do things and have like some level of like interest and and, and interaction there. All gone, sitting in a vault. And in, in a physical vault, not allowed to be touched by anybody. Crazy. Man, just talking about all this just makes me want to cry. Because yep. people are like, hey, why haven't you talked about this? It's because anytime I talk about the state of both Silent Hill and Metal Gear, I just want to cry. Especially because on my YouTube channel, those are the two franchises that I'm most famous for talking about. They're absolutely brilliant franchises. And because Konami is run by a bunch of evil corporate... Mm, I can't, I can only talk about them for so long on my channel before, you know, people just lose interest. I, I can only milk it for as long as I can without uh, new content coming out. So that's one part of it. Anyways, uh, good luck to Hassan Karaman with the abandoned project based on the stuff that I know about it. It sounds like a cool concept, like just trying to make it as realistic a survival simulator as you can. I look forward to maybe covering it if it happens to be any good in the coming years whenever it gets released so that's that let's move on to uh, something else maybe something a little bit more positive uh, a horror franchise that might just be getting some sort of a revival dead space a really good now horror game now it's not it's not confirmed that it's dead space no, right right it, right it, it, it's it's one of the ips that was shut down and ha does not has not had any active development put into it in the last few years one of those ips is getting resurrected and is being brought back as a as a as a lead title game for ea by a studio under ea and there's a lot of rumors going on everything from motive to uh, a couple other companies 
and again the ips literally like like pick a half a dozen of them i mean like like pick up pick a full dozen of them whatever you want there's mm-hmm. so many ips and so many ideas and so many game companies that ea has ruthlessly destroyed in the past yeah. and has collected their stuff and and again it's just sitting in a vault somewhere not making any money whatsoever it's the dumbest thing I, is this seriously one of the dumbest things i've seen them do but something that is not uncommon. Sometimes if you want your product to be the best, the easiest way to do that is to just remove all of your competition. And that includes buying them out and literally putting their stuff in a vault. Like it's easy. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but anyways, back to uh, the, the whole dead space thing. It may or like, like Sive said before, it may or may not be Dead Space. The only reason why we're thinking it's Dead Space is because Jeff Grubb, the guy that we mentioned before, the games journalist, said on Twitter that EA is reviving an established IP. And in the tweet, he said, we're going to see it if we're not dead first. Hmm. Right. So it's like, oh, is that him uh, trying to give us a little bit of a hint? Because he can't actually say whether it is or isn't. Or is it him just talking about 2020 and 2021? Right. (laughs) Right. Right, exactly. Right? So it's kind of it's kind of one of those things. Now, again, I have no. Um, I cut off most of my contacts at EA a long time ago. Uh, it was actually I had a good amount of contacts at EA. I had multiple studios right up until Anthem, and they were all promising me the moon on Anthem. And and we talked about it. I talked about it on the podcast a couple of times. I'm like, these guys are swearing that this is this is the game to to you know set the new standard for video games. I just didn't realize that they were talking about the new failure standard of video games. Mm. Um, but I don't know what it is. And I would hazard a guess that literally anything's on the table. However, Dead Space is a really good candidate. It's a very, very good candidate because it's doesn't take a lot of effort to make the game. Yeah. And right now with the whole like murder simulator among us, murder simulator game mm. rolling around out there it honestly might have like it it does have this perfect scenario right because imagine if you know they had a you know they had a a single player story they had a co-op campaign uh, or like some co-op you know pvp action but then they also had a game mode which just emulated among us or sorry not among us uh uh, wait no that that, yeah uh, that emulated among us and allowed us to like play the whole like play the thing but this time like as like you know 3d npcs running around a ship like genius that that would be so genius, especially if your comms could be messed with or or some other stuff going on. Like, you know, there there's a whole bunch of different angles that, that again, now would be a perfect time for it. But EA is not very good at the timing. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Man, just by saying that, you just made me more excited and made me want it more to be Dead Space. I, the only I would I would love it too. And and again, I think that 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 concept would be genius, especially if they added some more like new mechanics that you don't have in Among Us, but you'll have it in that. And and they opened that version up for a free to play, and they didn't monetize the game hardly at all. But they did have the you know the purchase the full thing to do the single player campaign and this other stuff. They would literally like just come in like a wrecking ball. But again, I, I don't think they're that smart. I, I really don't think they're that smart. I think yeah. they're, I think they're uh, barely smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the one thing that I'll agree with you on. It's that they're not particularly smart when it comes to uh, business stuff. All they know to, how, how like, to do is like, just... Like with their previous Battlefield game, all they had to do, all they had to do, they own, like they wanted to do a separate timeline thing with like, you know, cool steampunk powers and, and, mm-hmm. and other cool things like that. All they needed to do was just slap the name Command and Conquer on that, <laughs> you know, for the alternate timeline universe where things in science are all topsy turvy. Mm-hmm. And they would have probably, they would have had a barn burner with that game. People would have been like, oh, but this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to because it's a Command and Conquer universe. The Command and Conquer universe is crazy. Einstein did all this cool stuff. And like people would have gotten legitimately behind it and been like, oh, this is so awesome. But they didn't. They had the perfect opportunity to. They all they all it would have taken was like 10 minutes of like work. And and they could have like brought in Battlefield Command and Conquer edition and and set up a whole new uh, level of like you know selling you my you know cosmetics and st- and stuff like this. Instead, they're like, no, no, no. You if you don't like the game, don't buy it. It's like it's okay, like, it's, it's the dumbest. <laughs> it's the dumbest advertising shtick I've ever heard. And yeah. they're not the first ones to have tried that. And guess what? 
whenever somebody tries it, they always fail. It's never succeeded. Why did they think they could do that when they could just slap again, command and conquer on it, say all the cosmetics are because of timey, timey wimey stuff. It's all very timey wimey and 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 you know poof piff and 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 we we don't know what's going on. All they would have needed to do is say that, and everybody would have been happy. Well, most everybody would have been happy. Although I will say, if you know they did make another command and conquer game and they did want it to sell like hotcakes, best decision they could make is if they made the subtitle timey wimey. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Absolutely. I, I think that's copyrighted though so ah oh, damn it yeah. oh, i could have used it then but never mind so uh hopefully it is dead space might be command and conquer might be skate whatever above all i think most people would want it to be dead space and for the reasons that side cited i think that would be brilliant but we'll just have mm-hmm. to see if ea has uh, any degree of brain cells to rub together in the near future anyways uh let's move on to the next one uh this is just a small one and then side's got other stuff that he wants to talk about uh insomniac games apparently they're doing uh well they're working on their new game whatever it is and apparently it's going to have multiplayer so this is a bit of a departure from what we tend to expect from Insomniac. Uh, the last time they did anything that had multiplayer in it was back before the last decade when they did the Resistance games. Yeah, you remember those? I never played those games. Apparently they were really good. But yeah, I, Insomniac, they've done the Ratchet and Clank games, which are well received. Sunset Overdrive, a bit of an underrated game. Uh, Spider-Man, the, the most recent Spider-Man game, which was excellent. And if they can sort of take the increasingly brilliant game design that they're putting into their games and put into a multiplayer game, I, I'd be really curious to see what they can offer, what they can do that's unique. But that's uh, pretty much it. Like, Saib, did you have anything you wanted to say on that? Um, Head Prince, or is it Price? He knows what he's doing. He's been there for, good lord, coming up on 20... No, wait, is it coming up on 30 years? Good lord, is it long time? Long? Yeah. You know, and he knows what he's doing. And I would say that Ratchet and Clank is one of the best games, one of the best new generation games that I've seen in a very, very long time. And I and I think it's absolutely excellent. Have I you played wish... it? No, no, no. I've just I've been watching other people play it. I don't I don't own a uh, own PS5. A yeah. PS5 for um, PS5 reasons. <laughs> like it, it is. There's a lot of problems with with what Sony is doing right now, and, and I don't. I mean, I think we're gonna. Uh, I think the best thing is to not support gigantic companies and corporations necessarily. I I stopped doing the whole console war long time ago mm-hmm. because PC gives me more freedom to do what I want, and so I th- I think that's the future of of games, and I think that's the preferred future of games. It's inevitable. Yeah. yeah, consoles are going to die at some point and everybody's going to get a PC. Well, it's just they hold a lot of technology back. But Ratchet Clank is one of the first games that really opened up, you know, new technology and they're actually pushing it forward. That's what that's what these consoles should have been doing, you know, 10 years ago. But they've been stuck doing this loop of like, no, we, we want to just, you know, stifle creativity and, and bring things in slowly and then censor things left, right and center, too. It's like that's not what most gamers were, you know. <laughs> Gamers don't like rigid rules and and stuff. We like creative freedom. We like freedom in general. It's like creative freedom is the best. And people who are staunchly against freedom tend to dislike um, video games. So, but no, I I think I think this is a, a good unless sign. you're a Republican, because <laughs> they're all for freedom, but they don't like video games. Yeah, yes. uh, I I think I don't think any politician likes video games. It's like it's like I mean they just they just don't know the language. It's like yeah, I I remember you know kids playing that that Super Nintendo and the and the, and the little the little red plumber guy. You know that's great stuff there. It's like you know you're only lucky that 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 reference is still actually you know somewhat coherent <laughs> these days <laughs> yeah like, their experience of video games is that one time back in 85 when they were at a uh, a bob evans and there was a pac-man machine set up was exactly. bob evans back uh, around back then i don't know but yeah uh, insomniac games are one of the few studios around that's basically doing what gamers generally speaking want to do. Yeah, yeah and doing healthy stuff them along with studios like sucker punch and from software studios like that and i highly especially after ratchet and clank which as you said looks bloody amazing i can't wait to play it i'm very very much looking forward to whatever they have next so side yeah. so uh we got about say 10 15 minutes left you want to talk about what you've got on the docket yeah so uh, i my favorite game genre uh, my favorite game series as a whole is probably followed it's got the highest number of like my coherent 
or my uh, consistent favorite games of every generation. Fallout 1, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout Van Buren, where it was and what what it was doing. That was the that was essentially the Fallout 3 before it was canceled. Fallout 3 is is great. Fallout New Vegas is better. Fallout 4 is is amazing. Little light on the RPG elements, but modding helps bring that back. I don't know if you know, but I am I am a, a pretty big modder in um as far as like the, the history of Fallout 4 goes. I I got a couple of smaller mods, but I helped write one of the biggest mods there is, and it changes the world, adds new endgame content, new endgame story, uh rebuilt dialogue trees and whatnot for main characters, endings that are more flushed out. Uh, utilizes a, a new character that I wrote, and it's really great. It's really great. It's my favorite thing. 76 was a huge disappointment. It was a bigger disappointment and a bigger betrayal because they cut out the story. They said, we don't need to tell you a story, not a story that mattered. Every story that that was, you know, on those stupid tapes and on, on those stupid notes, it was all sad. It's all like, oh, everything's coming to a horrible end, and now everything's over, and now I die. Blah. Like that's that's what every story was right. in that game on release. And it was terrible. Absolute garbage. The modders, the modding community wasn't engaged at all. Um, Gopher is one of these Gopher is the is a, his online name for one of the biggest modders in both Skyrim and Fallout. And he developed several patches almost immediately for the game. And he pointed out to a whole bunch of things that that could have fixed the vast majority of their problems almost immediately. And they ignored him. They ignored him. They ignored Caliente. They ignored all of these massive, creative, brilliant mod creators. And they could have brought them in, signed them up with an NDA, said, here's our game. Help us like prep it for launch. You know, do your magic on this. It's the same engine as Fallout 4. You know, they could have done it. They really could have done it, but they chose not to because, you know, they knew what they were doing. And this, again, I want to be very clear on this. This wasn't Bethesda's doing. This wasn't Bethesda's calls. They had to basically run with this. The people behind this decision was largely was largely ZeniMax. They were setting this up. They wanted this to be blow, to blow, you know, everybody out of the water so that they could line the, up the company and make it go public you know, on the, on the stock exchange. And they were, you know, hoping to reap this just massive, you know, they were all going to be billionaires overnight. It was going to be crazy. But then 76 bombed so bad, so terrible and ruined that whole thing that they ended up selling it to Microsoft because they couldn't get the, they couldn't get the money that they wanted to get publicly before 76 dropped. If they would have gone public, they would have made about 60, $70 a share. But they were thinking if 76 was this huge success, then they'd be sitting around walking around with probably the ability to go up to like 140 per share. But after 76 dropped, their shares like estimated was like 30 to $20. Oh, so that it murdered their their opportunity and they they couldn't fight past this so they just sold themselves out to Microsoft. Nobody who's was pr the primary decision makers on 76 is working at the company anymore. Like they've been integrated into Microsoft and almost all of those people at Zenimax were given money and and left and walked away. They they you know a lot of them retired. They they made out like bandits. They didn't make as much money as they wanted to by going public, but you know, they made enough. And so they basically chopped up the company, sold it to Microsoft, and then they're, they're done. And now the two, you know, head people now are Phil um, and uh, Pete. not Phil, uh, sorry, Pete, Pete Hines and um, and Todd Howard and Phil Spencer are now the essentially the heads of what Microsoft or what what Bethesda does now under the Microsoft banner. So this has led a lot of questions as to what is the future of starfield going to be like is it going to be a good game are they going to make the same mistakes that they made in 76 so part of answering that question was to come back and look at 76 and where it is today and where it is in about in about two weeks their newest uh, dlc comes out their newest expansion comes out free to play and to kind of see and gauge like where where it is as a game so i've hopped into it now for a week i did one week solid just solid gameplay. Nice. Uh, doing the dailies every day, having fun, playing around with it. Again, it wasn't a lot. It was only like two two hours every day. Just messing around, meeting people, seeing what it's like. Uh, I don't encourage anybody to pick this game up. It's still a little broken. Uh, we need to see what the next expansion brings, which is, like I said, about two weeks from now. Other than that, it is on sale right now. And you can pick it up for like 10 bucks American, I think. Uh, mm. So 
if you are a Fallout fan, if you like the previous games, and if you didn't give 76 a try because of how bad it was at launch, uh, you might want to consider picking it up now on sale. Do not buy this game at full price. It is still not worth it. In my humble opinion, it's still not worth the full price tag. Don't buy the microtransactions. It's not worth it. It's not needed. Uh, right. You can get, you can get uh, aside from the cosmetic stuff, you get a whole bunch of free atoms to spend on this, on the stuff. And unless you're Unless you're really pushing like a particular end game content or doing a particular thing, there's there's absolutely no need to spend any money on this game at all. And they're pretty happy with that where where it's at as far as both the community goes and the devs go. Uh, we're not seeing any new overpriced dumb garbage coming into the into the store. Everybody I talk to in the game seems to be enjoying the game. They understand that there's you know kind of a kind of a negative stigma about it. They don't. But at the same time, they've actually been enjoying themselves. So again, these are people who are what I would say and what they would say are diehard follow fans, or they play with somebody who is a diehard follow fan and they just play together with them and they're playing together with them because it's actually fun to play together. So that's that's basically it in a nutshell. I don't think that the game is quite there yet, but we've got this expansion coming out in two two weeks, a little less than two weeks, which looks amazing, which looks very well done, which has involved the community and the PTR way more than they ever have done before. These are great signs because what this means and what this is telling me is that Microsoft is actively interested in engaging with the players in the community on an active daily basis. This is great news, mm. really great news, because then that means that they won't do that. They won't make the same mistakes when it comes to, you know, the next Elder Scrolls, you know, uh, Starfield and the next Fallout game. Um, we're going to see them get better. Hopefully, again, fingers are very crossed. I, I don't trust any mega corporation and Microsoft is one of statistically has been one of the worst and i don't trust them necessarily all the time i i think there's a lot of very dangerous things going on right now both in gaming and and just mega corpse in general you know the 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 scary things we uncover when we discover what they've been trying to patent you know yeah. like like you know human breathing okay i'm joking on that one but seriously <laughs> I, I i i imagine that at some point somebody will try and say you know, probably a government slash corporation merger at some point. That's that's probably the worst, most scariest thing in my mind. Um, but a, a giant mega corporation that is also the government just shows up at your door and go, sir, you've taken uh, several hundred breaths today that were unaccounted for in our legal department. So we're going to make sure that you stop breathing for the next 25 minutes here. Uh, to make up for all that air you've been using, you know we own the air. It's copyrighted. Uh, we we own that stuff. Copyright. It's like that's the nightmare scenario, right? That's in my head, and and I, and I hate that. So no, I don't trust mega corporations. No, I'm not. I'm not touting for for Bethesda or for this game. I don't recommend it unless you are a, a very very heavy fan of the game. Um, it is better and it is on sale right now and that's the only time i would recommend picking it up if you are interested in picking it up you can swing by my discord and uh talk to me and uh, maybe we can play a little bit in game i'm really excited for the exp uh, the expeditions that they're bringing up in a couple of months here the expeditions are going to explore parts of the fallout universe before we've ever seen them so mm -hmm. the, like this is about 150 years before most of the stuff happens in the in the games canonically and i played through the story that they've done recently i'm very happy with it and i'm i think over the next i and I, i'm i'm very very hesitantly very hesitantly excited excited is too strong of a word slightly yeah. interested in the expansion in these uh not they're not expansions they're excursions these excursions to um other places in the fallout universe to see the formation of certain things like the formation of the master's cult like mm -hmm. that's so exciting to me the for i mean the master himself like like seeing something happen there um meeting you know meeting marcus you know when he was just maybe before he was turned into a mutant you know uh you know meeting harold before he gets the tree in his head or or just after he gets the tree and it starts growing in his head there's tons of things that i would be so interested in seeing 
and from the most recent story that they've been putting into the game like so the original release it had no story just that depressing garbage crap they have since added npcs they've added factions they've added a, a, a ton of uh, story and content and from that stuff i i've got to say that it's been getting very very good and i'm i am again extremely cautiously optimistic that they might actually have a game that actually offers us good content mm -hmm. um, and good story content. And I am excited for that, again, extremely hesitantly because of, of how much I was burned on, on Fallout before. You know, they've made a lot of dumb decisions, a stupid kid in the fridge, um, which which wasn't as what? bad as what some people said. They, they, so they put this uh, ghoul kid in a fridge and they made it seem like the the kid was um was ghoulified for like 200 years and just sitting around and his parents like you know literally two blocks away were sitting there all this time um turns out that there's some hints that it may have actually been something more recent as in like the last like you know year not necessarily uh something that happened you know 200 years ago so it's, it's one of those weird things that the the that the players have poked fun at and been upset with and annoyed with and, and stuff like that and yeah it's it's i mean again it's not the best i want to see better writing i i have been actively very interested in the fallout lore for a very very long time it's one of the few things that me and my older brother can agree with uh, sorry agree upon and enjoy together so it's something that i'm hoping uh in the future they will do a better job and so if you're interested in it right now and you're a Fallout fan, you might want to check it out. If you're not a Fallout fan, um, the game is not ready yet. I, it, it, if you're not a fan of this type of genre, if, the, if you're not a fan of Fallout in general, uh, probably wait at least another six months, if not another like nine. And and again, I hate saying that because I think games should be made, you know, and finished before their release. Mm but this is one of those games where there is a gradually evolving story so that's something that you kind of like enjoy the ride for right so right so other than the ten dollar buy-in right now there's no there's no subscription you can get in you can play whenever you want and stop and pick it back up again whenever you want don't buy the game at full price it's not worth and yeah that's that's my uh that's my feelings on fallout 76 and i really hope it gets better because i want there to be a really i want fallout 5 to be one of the best games i've ever played sure and that's not going to happen if everybody just says, you know, poo poo, I hate this, and you know, screw, you know, everybody, and you know, that's not going to help either, right? Yeah. And it's not going to help with if the company is just like, like, oh, we're going to add microtransactions to everything. It's like we've got to stop this stuff, yeah. but we also got to like make an active effort to be engaged too. So demonstrate your enthusiasm where it's warranted. And hopefully uh, when Starfield comes out, that'll be the ultimate referendum on whether or not Bethesda is going in the right direction. Until mm -hmm. then we can pay attention to Fallout six, uh, 76 and the attention that is given to that game to see if maybe they are keeping to that commitment. Uh, it's pretty much all we have until Starfield comes out. And uh, based on what Sive says, it seems like they're going in the right direction and they will keep supporting it until then and possibly past that as they have been for the past couple of years since it came out. So we'll see. Anyways, uh, we've gone a bit over time, uh, but we covered a lot of ground today. That's good. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining the show today. Uh, listen, if you want an audio version of this podcast, you can get it. All you have to do is go over to my Patreon page and support me at $1 Canadian. That's less than a dollar American, and it's just $1 a month. So just listen to this on your iPhone, your iPod, your Android, whatever you use to listen to your podcast, you can do it there. I want to thank Saib, as always, for doing this show with me, with all the insights that he provides so i do want to tell quickly uh where people can find you online follow us on youtube at the triple s league and you can also follow us on the twitter at triple s league we are also on um patreon on subscribe star and on literally half a dozen of the other streaming services so a lot i get i get the question every once in a while like are you on BitChute? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we've been on BitChute for a long time now. Uh, we're also on some of the others, and we also have uh, two podcasts that we do a week. Uh, one one of them is more gaming-focused and, and interactive, where we actually play games with the community and, and engage stuff and, and do some art and streams and stuff. And then the other one is more uh, short news, uh, done fast kind of thing. They do really good content over there, guys. Make sure to go check them out. I'll put links to their stuff in the description box below. And you can just find me on all the various 
forms of social media, just at Max Derrett. I'll put a link to my YouTube channel in the description box below. Thanks, guys. And until we do this again next week, I just want to remind you, as per usual, stay yellow.